Good afternoon and welcome to the April 25th, 2023 Heritage Gray Highlands Committee meeting. I am Coordinator Thompson and I will be chairing the meeting to move the committee through the first three agenda items on today's published agenda. Under agenda item one, I call this meeting to order at 2.01 p.m. Moving on to agenda item two, um, committee member introductions. Um, we will go around the virtual table um, and each member uh, will have a moment to tell us about themselves um, and share about their interests in heritage along with any pertinent experience related to heritage. Um, so first I would ask uh, member Dubik. Hello, uh, so my name is um, Nadia Dubik. I'm first term counselor um, on the Great Highlands Council. Uh, interested in joining and being here uh, with this committee. Uh, I do have a love of architecture and development. Um, I do appreciate the history of the area um, and, the, and the human stories that go along with it. And, uh, and, and I'm excited to work with the committee. Now, yeah. So thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi, Member Meslin. We are just going around the table and doing some brief introductions. So I'll call on you um, when it's your opportunity to do so. Thank you. Um, thank you, Member Dubik. Um, moving on to um, Member Lawhead, who is our alternate council appointee. Hi, everybody. So some of you know me, I know some of you. Um, new councillor in the municipality of Grey Highlands. Um, I was interested in joining the uh, Heritage uh, Committee um, because I uh, part of the reason that I moved to this municipality uh, 10 years ago is uh, due to the rural heritage. And um, I think it's an important uh, aspect of Grey Highlands. And I'm looking forward to uh, helping us uh, maintain it and all aspects of it uh, here in this uh, body. Thank you, Member Lowhead. Um, now moving to Member Ferguson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I'm Member Ferguson. I have met most of you at one time or another, uh, returning to this committee after the last term. And um, I have uh, some connection to the world of heritage and culture through my previous academic studies where I hold a master's degree in art history, uh, though mostly focused on ancient China, which is not as relevant to Grey Highlands in the present day. Uh, other than that, um, thanks, for, thanks for being here. Thank you, Member Ferguson. Um, moving on to Member Halliday. Pardon me, uh, Stuart Halliday. Uh, I've been on the Heritage Committee off and on for many, many years. And uh, I'm a former counselor. Um, heritage is uh, just actually part of my blood, but because of my age, but also I owned a, a 20 uh, in, in Guelph uh, 22 years ago for 22 years, a beautiful old farmhouse that was in Guelph and is being renovated. We did some renovations and uh, is now up for sale. If you want to buy it, it's $1.6 million. I also owned the Oscar Phillips house at one time in, in, uh, uh, in Flesherton. And I, I bought that as a, as a rebound because uh, my brother and I had wanted to purchase Munshaw House. I've always had a love for Munshaw House. And the Oscar Phillips house was actually built on Aaron Munshaw land. Uh, so anyhow, I also... Up there is, we've been honoring heritage in Grey Highlands uh, through the museum board, et cetera, cultural plants, et cetera. So I just wanna see it all come together. It's a beautiful uh, place to live. Uh, it's, it's paradise. So anyhow, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for listening. Thank you, Member Halliday. Um, next, I would ask Member Harrop. So uh, Member Harrop, I know you joined the meeting a little late. We are on agenda item two and we're just going around and introducing the members of the committee. Thank you, apologies. I had some uh, technical difficulties. Um, 
I am also a recent transplant to Grey Highlands. Uh, I have spent a lot of time over my life in the area, but uh, have lived here since 2020. Um, I live in a, an 1852 church um, and have really loved sort of getting to know the, the heritage of the community a little bit more. I was looking for a way to give back. So this is my, this is my thing. Thank you. Um, moving on to member Matthews. Um, I think as most of you know, I, I've actually been the chair of Heritage Grey Highlands for the last 10 or more years. I've owned a place at my place at Lake Eugenia for 43 years, and we've lived here permanently for 20. It was shortly after we moved here that I got involved with Heritage. Um, in my background, I studied architecture at university. Uh, I never graduated and I never practiced, but I'm very knowledgeable and having studied art, the history of art and architecture very in, much in depth, very knowledgeable about heritage architecture. And um, in the last 12 years, I've become very knowledgeable about the Ontario Heritage Act, how it works and how we interfaced with the municipality in order to assist with them in helping to maintain heritage. I, I really believe in the uh, concept of and the environmental value of keeping old buildings, retrofitting them, uh, repurposing them. Like I love, Jen lives in an old church. That's fabulous. And the more of that we do, I mean, the, the old, the, the greenest building on the planet has already been built. And so, you know, that, that's kind of where I'm coming from. And I'm, I would very much like to continue working in heritage and continue doing what I've been doing all along. Thank you, Member Matthews. Um, moving on to Member Meslin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Member, Member Meslin, which might be confusing as I can see all of your names are also member. So we're gonna have a hard time keeping track of who's who. Um, I live in Eugenia. This is the first committee, first time I've ever served on a committee in Grey Highlands. I'm very excited. And I think understanding our past is a really important part of charting a future. So I just wanna learn more about where we've been. I have particular interest in, in parts of the municipality's history that perhaps at other times have been overlooked in particular the indigenous and uh, black histories um, uh, within our municipality. Nice to meet you all. Nice to see some familiar faces. Thank you, Member Meslin. And finally, um, moving to Member Wickens. Sorry about that, not paying attention. Good afternoon, my name is Sharon Wickens. I live in Eugenia. I have lived in Grey Highlands for that Artemisia 36 years, and I was raised outside of Mark Hill for another 22 years. So I have been in the area around um, like the public school, Mark Hill High School in Washington and nursing school in Northern Ontario. Um, but I always believe that you got to have these buildings. People don't notice a building until it's gone. When, oh, it's gone. It's just like old barns. I had this thing about old barns, old buildings. And there's so many stories in each building, the how, who put the brick in. And like in churches, there's so many different colors of the mortar. And you have to get specific people to put that type of mortar in, mortar in for the hold the bricks. So there is lots of interest, and that's what I wish to uh, investigate, learn more, and be able to pass that on to uh, our younger generations. Thank you, Member Wickens, and thank you, everyone. Um, now moving on to agenda item three, um, which is the election of the chair and the vice chair. Um, so I will read from the script and um, we'll just get started here. At this time, the committee is required to elect a chair and vice chair from among its members for the current term. I will be facilitating the ele election on behalf of the committee. The process for the election shall be as follows. I will start with the position of chair. I will call three times for, for nominations. Each nomination shall require a seconder. 
The nominee is allowed to nominate him or herself. However, a seconder is still required. Once I have called three times for the position of chair, I will close nominations and verify that the nominees wish to let their name stand. If there is only one nominee, that person shall be acclaimed. If more than one nominee, a secret ballot vote shall commence. I will then repeat the process for the position of vice chair, and when the election is complete, I will hand the reins over to the newly elected or appointed chair. Um, are there any questions from the committee members at this time? Member Matthews? You are muted. Um, I'm just wondering if um, um, Clerk um, Martel would like to share with the entire committee what she told me, we told some of us before the meeting. Clerk Martel. Hi, thank you. Um, so throughout this meeting, we're going to be going through the not only the nominations of chair and vice chair, but also the members will be appointing a head to the Heritage um, Great Highlands Working Group. So previously, uh, Member Matthews was the pretty much the entirety of the working group um, previously, and um, my assumption would be that um, the head and the chair would potentially be two different positions. The reason for that being is that the head of the working group would generally be the person that will be bringing forth all of the information that the working group has compiled to the, um, the committee here. Um, the chair of this committee is supposed to remain impartial as the duties of the chair require in order to be able to see, to uh, get the information from both sides. That may be difficult if the head is presenting the information and is also acting as the chair. Um, um, so I just wanted to make sure that the members of the committee take that into consideration when they're going through this. Um, there was discussion brought forward about how um, through uh, Community Heritage Ontario, they reach out to the chair of the committee itself, generally speaking. Um, so if the head and the chair were the same person, could the vice chair actually be the person that actually chairs the meetings um, as opposed to the chair being in title only? So those are some considerations that the committee might want to think about when they're going through their, um, their election and nomination process. Are we allowed to sort of express an opinion? Would I be able to express an opinion? <laughs> Just before we start all this, um, because I've been doing this for so long, I mean, people find me, you know, like, and Raylene will tell you, Raylene sends me things all the time. And maybe she would send them because it's a working group. Somebody calls and they have a question about their heritage property. The email comes to me. If it went to somebody that wasn't me and that person wasn't paying attention, I didn't get it for three days. It's just more stuff. So personally, I, I, I don't know. I would like to be either the chair or the vice chair. If I'm the chair, I would... Um, probably always turn the meeting over to the vice chair. So whoever accepts vice chair, if that's the case, should be willing to, to take that position. I'm good Thank with you. either, by the way. Thank you, Member Matthews. Are there any other questions? Um, Member Halliday? Uh, just a comment. Uh, uh, I've been on some of the original heritage committees and uh, the heritage committee uh, chair and 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 all the members uh, moved into a working group and we met monthly. Okay, and that was you know before before uh, back in the before Nancy was on involved and was uh, Dimitri and Tr Sheila Lambrinos and a lot of other people. So the working group was made up of uh, of the board itself because the board you know was unwieldy in size. I mean, that's still a possibility. We've decided to use a working group. I understand there's a workaround, so I support the workaround. So, and that being said, I'd like to nominate uh, uh, Ma Nancy Matthews uh, for the position of chair. Second. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so member Matthews has been nominated by member Halliday, seconded by member Ferguson. Are there any further nominations for the position of chair?
calling again. Uh, are there any nominations for the position of chair? And a third time, are there any further nominations for the position of chair? Um, seeing none, um, Member Matthews, do you wish to let your name stand for the position, position of chair? Yes, I will. Thank you. Um, Member Matthews, you have been acclaimed as the position, acclaimed to the position of chair. I need you all. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So um, moving on to um, nominations for vice chair. Um, I would ask now if there are any nominations for the position of vice chair. Member Matthews? I would like to uh, nominate Member Ferguson because I know he does a great job chairing meetings. <laughs> and a seconder for that motion, Member Halliday. Okay, calling a second time for nominations for the position of vice chair. And calling a third and final time for the position of vice chair. Seeing no further nominations, um, Member Ferguson, do you wish to let your name stand for the position of vice chair? I do, thank you. And at this time, Member Ferguson, you have been acclaimed to the position of vice chair. So um, concluding uh, agenda item number three, I will now pass um, the chair over to Chair Matthews. Thank you, everybody. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll go through this a little bit. I want to say thank you to everyone for your support. I'm looking forward to working with all of you and with Emmett. I've worked with Emmett left out that he was on the MHAC meeting, the MHAC committee, and he, he really does understand Robert's Rules of Orders and all of that stuff. So when we get to that business part of the agenda, I'm going to turn it over to Emmett. Meantime, though, uh, the first order of business is the approval of the agenda. And I believe there is one um, amendment to that. And is this where I suggest that we um, approve the ad agenda as amended? Oh, it says as amended or, or as amended. Or do we have to explain the amendment? So a member of the, of the committee would need to make a motion for that amendment. Okay. Member Ferguson, and that's seconded by Member Dubik. Yeah. Sorry, I was okay. raising my hand to... <clears throat> Sorry. To adopt the agenda as circulated, if there are amendments, I'd like to know what they are. Yeah, okay, well, that's what I, I probably, you know what, I'm going to turn the chair over right now because I have to speak to what the what the amendment is. Emmett, you now have the chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, you, Madam If Jane. you would like to go to, if if you can, um, oh, it, it, the amendment is the wording of um the wording of 6.4 which currently reads that heritage gray highlands recommend that council direct staff to reach out to all currently designated and listed heritage properties when we get there i'll address it but i want the words and listed removed from that motion because it, it it's um it's a little too soon to be doing that under a whole lot of other circumstances that surround the issue. So that that I think that was it. Really? Yeah. Sorry, I was waiting for the chair to recognize me. <laughs> um, uh, through you, Chair Ferguson, um, to Member Matthews, if it's the wording of a recommendation, the recommendation doesn't form part of an amendment for the agenda. The recommendation is just there for something to consider. It doesn't actually become a motion until such time as it's moved and seconded. So the agenda does not have to be amended in order to change wording of a recommendation included on it. Okay, thank you. It makes it cleaner. Okay, that's fine. Thank you both. Uh, so at this time, I believe we have a motion on the table to approve the agenda as presented. Uh, care of myself and I'll say member Dubik. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so actually I have an amendment to the agenda. Oh, I see. Okay. Go ahead. 
Um, so, so that the agenda be amended to add the Community Heritage Ontario Spring 2023 Ministry Update to the agenda after item 7.9. Uh, very well. Uh, I was going to have you as second on the motion. Uh, I'm assuming that that's friendly for you. Mm -hmm. do it. Good. So the motion is to uh, approve the agenda as presented with the addition of item, an item following 7.9 regarding some Ontario heritage. Okay. Uh, what I said yesterday. <laughs> what I sent yesterday. <laughs> I saw Coordinator Thompson there momentarily, but it appears they've gone. Uh, at this time, I'll call to the orders. Uh, please raise your hand if you uh, would like to approve the agenda as presented in a minute. All votes in favor of the agenda. Anyone against the agenda? Anyone abstaining? <laughs> Thank you, the motion carries. Uh, item number five uh, is open for a declaration of pecuniary interest. Uh, does anyone have any declaration of pecuniary interest or conflict of interest they might wish to raise at this time? Seeing none, I will move to items for consideration, starting with 6.1. Uh, a, as to the meeting schedule for this committee, um, suggested dates for Tuesdays in July and October. I will entertain motions in this regard. I so move. Thank you, Member Matthews. Any further, uh, a second, please. I can second. Uh, thanks, you, Member Harrop. Uh, any discussion or amendments regarding this motion? Uh, just just briefly for some of the people that joined late, it is this is the formal schedule preset of the minimum of three in a year. But if items come up that are of, of a more timely nature that need to be dealt with, we will there is a machinery for us to call a special meeting as long as the it's announced publicly and the agenda is up 48 hours before, same as, as these meetings. Thank you. So. We're not confined to the three. That's just the three that are firm set. Any other discussion or amendments to the motion as presented? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of this schedule? All against? All abstaining? Motion carries. Item 6.2, as to the Heritage Great Highlands Committee, establishing bylaw and member roles and responsibilities. May I have a motion that the committee receive the overview for information in the form of two PDFs? Thank you, Member Meslin and Member Dubik. Any discussion or questions about these items? Member Meslin. Yeah, I don't know if this is the right to ask this or if I should do a point of privilege, but I am genuinely curious as to whether there's any official protocol or legislation that requires us to all be calling each other member. <laughs> no, it's like we're a, we're kind of like we're not a we're not a governing body. We're not an elected body. We're an advisory body of citizens in a really small town. I think it's really weird that we're not just calling each other Emmett and Nadia. I don't even know what member Harrop's name is. And Jen, I believe. <laughs> thank you. I just like, is there, can we, can we use our names? Can could it be like Dave Meslin bracket member? Can I, are we allowed to refer to each other by our actual names? Cause so far it feels like some kind of secret society or cult to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it, it doesn't make any difference to me personally. I think it's just kind of there. So when I look at the, at the thumbnails, I see the thing and then I say the thing. Uh, I have that kind of literate brain, but um, I'm happy to call you Dave if that uh, appeals. Oh, well, I'm, I'm proposing yeah. that, we change, that we change the thumbnails too. Like, <laughs> okay. I've never been on a Zoom call where my name wasn't under my face. 
in my I whole life. You, you have the ability to click on your name and change it to what you want us to call you, I believe. Um, um, yeah, really, if you if you click on the three little dots up beside your mute button, it'll pop down rename. And then I up pops member Matthews and I can change that to. <laughs> So anybody that wants to do that can do that and would hereby be called by your first name if that's what you want. And otherwise, is that okay? Is that all right with you, uh, Raylene, for us to do it that way? Oh, certainly. Um, absolutely, for sure. Um, it's up to the individual committees how they want to um, put their name. Remembering that this, even though it is just a, a, a committee of member citizens, it is also a formal body recognized under the Municipal Act for as a committee of council. So there is some kind of method of decorum. The other thing is by referencing that you are a member of the committee when people are speaking um, and they are recognized by the chair, anybody from the public that's watching the meeting understands whether you are a staff member or whether you are a voting member of the committee. So it provides that level of understanding and information to others as well. So that's why we have that established that. Um, just so you do know, the back end of, uh, of our Zoom process, uh, because this is a webinar and you have individual invitations as, um, as panelists to these meetings, the name will all, always populate with your title on the committee and then your member. So, uh, and then your, your last name, um, as that's, as that's how it will. If you wish to change your name to your actual name, you can by all means feel free to do so. Thank you, Madam Clerk, uh, Nancy, Dave, etc. Uh, the motion on the table is that we receive the Heritage Great Highlands Committee terms of reference and roles and responsibilities. Uh, any further final discussion on that point specifically? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor of accepting these two documents for information? All against? All abstaining. Motion carries. Uh, item 6.3, that Heritage Gray Highlands receives staff report CTE 2302, and that Heritage Gray Highlands hereby approve the terms of reference attached to establish a working group as referenced in section nine of the Heritage Advisory Committee establishing bylaw 2023030. Any motions in this regard? Can I ask a question or does that wait for motions? By all means. Um, regarding the HGH working group, I just had a quick question on working group members. When the working group is presenting information to um, Heritage Great Highlands, will we be getting uh, basic background information on the volunteers, any uh, disclosure of con potential conflicts, that kind of thing? That's a great question. Thank you, Jen. Uh, Nancy, you seem to want to respond. But what's always happened in the past is the, um, and I, I'm, I was going to speak to this issue myself, but should we have the motion and then discuss the situation? I, I believe that's how we're supposed to do it technically. Is that not right, Emmett? Uh, yes, I was unclear as to the nature of uh, Jen's okay. question. Okay. But, uh, it, yeah, it seems... but, but her, to Sorry, I'll wait my question, turn. Yeah, the, the working group, um, and I, will probably be the head of the the chair of the working group we would meet and there will i'm hoping there will be more than one several members of this committee that will be in the working group that will be involved in the process that's much more casual i mean we might meet at the library and spend two hours researching a heritage property or we might be out in the countryside looking at a heritage property and talking to the owner all of that sort of comes back and gets cobbled together and then it goes to the committee. But I believe that I, I'm to maintain a list and I would share the names of everybody on that committee with the main committee so you would understand. I have already got it started. And in fact, one of the people that's on the working group now is listening into this meeting. Okay, thanks Nancy. Um, so the, the motion is still to be on, put on the table. Uh, I'm wondering if anyone would like to yeah. I so move. Uh, do I have a second? Thank you, Member Dubik. Uh, so the the question is to receive the staff report and to approve the terms of reference for the working group subcommittee. Uh, 
Jen, does, are you satisfied with your, your question having been answered or do you have other questions? That was my only question. I'm, I'm comfortable to support, provided that we have that information as it comes. Great. Dave, I think I saw your hand or was I? Okay. Uh, anyone else, uh, questions, comments, Nancy? Um, yeah, my comment is, and I'm not sure it, it may be in the agenda here somewhere where it's recommended that as a committee, we once we accept this, I believe we need another motion to nominate someone as the chair who is wor working on behalf, because a lot of our upcoming motions are asking the working group to look after issues. And just for your information, the working group can be one person, which has been for the last while, or it can be 25 and they can, you know, as long as I maintain or the person in charge maintains a list of who they are, so. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Uh, Member Dubik. So I'd like to move a motion to appoint Nancy as the chair. Uh, would you like to include that in the motion on the table or as separate? Um, so maybe, maybe separate. Uh, very well. So we have the just the establishment of the terms of reference and the report as a current motion. And I'll, uh, I'll come back to you, Member Dubik, when we've resolved it. Right. Uh, any, any final questions uh, or discussion around the report and the terms of reference for these the uh, working group? I will call the question. All in favor? All against? All abstaining? Motion carries. Uh, Member Dubek, I believe you had a motion to put forward before we move to 4.6.4. Oops, there we go. Uh, yeah, so um, if we, I'd like to move the motion to um, appoint Nancy Matthews as the chair of the working group. Do I have a second? Thank you, Member Wickens. Uh, any discussion about this? Uh, any questions? Seeing none, I will call the question. All in favor of appointing Nancy Matthews as, sorry, what was the? The office, the head, the head of the Heritage Grey Highlands working group. Uh, all in favor? All against? All abstaining? Um, Nancy? And, be, oh, uh, and before you. Okay, sorry. Um, before we move on to the next issue, just as, as the thank you very much, Chair of the Working Group. I would like to invite everybody on this committee. If you want to put your, if you want to say so now, I'll tick your name off on my list. Otherwise, get in touch with me shortly because there's a lot of work that has, is upcoming, and we could really use the help. So whoever wants to join the working group, please let me know. So Emmett, that's a yes for you. Uh, time permitting. Um... Yeah, no, and it'll always be time permitting. And what I want to say about the working group, I want to talk a little bit about how it'll work. Um, say the issue is research. Maybe there's only two people on the working group committee that need to do research. Well, they're the only ones that would get involved in that particular part, but somebody else might wanna go out to old buildings and help people figure out how to fix the brickwork. Well, that only, and I have a guy on the committee that is an ex-contractor, he does that, but he doesn't come to research meetings because that's not his area of interest. So you don't have to be involved in everything. It's just great at being involved in something. And sometimes it's an issue that does require a more casual discussion about say a property or a property owner. And we kind of work together to figure out what we should bring back to HGH committee in terms of how to resolve or deal with whatever that issue happens to be. Excellent, thanks Nancy. Uh, great. Well, moving on a little bit, uh, we've got item 6.4 regarding heritage tax incentives, and there is a proposed motion that the that Heritage Grey Highlands recommend to council to direct staff to reach out to all currently designated and listed heritage properties to advise them of the tax incentive and initiate setup where requested. Would anyone like to make a motion in this regard? Yeah. Member Dewey. Nancy? I'll second, I'll second it. And then I have a comment. <laughs> uh, I think this is where you had suggested removing yeah. listed. 
Yeah. Thanks, Raylene. I'm getting it. I'm so glad that Emmett's doing what he's doing and making my life fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Emmett. I owe you. Um, the reason I want to take the way it listed out is right now, the tax incentive, it only applies to a designated property. And the issue of listing a property, taking a listed property and designating it is quite a complicated one. So rather than have it being the initial outreach on this incentive, and let's you know publicize it, but the initial initiative, I want the initial initiative of approaching designated owners about the tax incentive. Let's see how it goes because they have to sign a heritage easement. So this, this can't even happen until the heritage easement has been uh, passed through HGH for uh, for some kind of approval. Um, and um, and then I, with the listed people, definitely in the next thing where we would be approaching them, the next thing, the those people in the approach about do they want to get designated rather than be unlisted, the tax incentive would be used as a possible motivation for them saying yes. That's the rationale between taking the word and listed out of this particular motion. Thanks, Nancy. So I'm, I'm going to consider that a, a second to Member Dubik's uh, motion with that proviso. Member Dubik, is that change in language friendly to you? It is. Thank you. So the item as it stands uh, is to remove the listed clause there. Uh, Jen. Sorry, are we just talking? I'll get used to this, I promise. Are we just talking about the amendment or the actual motion now? The motion is now standing as amended. Okay. I had a very quick nitpicky question, um, which you might be realizing I do. I thought I had read throughout the documentation it was going to be potentially staff and volunteers. Um, if I read that wrong, it should remain as staff. If we want the opportunity for the working community, for the working committee or other volunteers, um, we should add that into the motion, I think. Or I just want to flag that. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Nancy, as the head of our working group and thus possibly volunteer wrangler, uh, what's your sense of this? It, it seems like this is the kind of thing where it might be best for as a staff role but I it, could well the, the staff is the one and I, I I'm sure I, I've talked to really about this issue staff are the people that will send the actual official letter and they will send they're the ones that are developing the easement it will come back to us I know that they they will reach out to us if they have any issues we actually have to approve what that easement agreement is under the Heritage Act so th this is not something that's going to happen tomorrow uh because because I believe the easement is still under structure. Uh, maybe uh, Clerk Martel can clear this up for us. Hey guys, um, I wasn't included in the introductions, but um, Nancy and I work quite closely together and we bounce things off each other very regularly. So unfortunately we cannot provide um, members of the committee with property owner information and that kind of thing. So it would be staff that would do the circulation um, based on the recommendations from the from the, the working group. Um, and then uh, with the conservation easement agreements, we actually just started working on one for uh, the recent Camplin designation that occurred just prior to this this committee being established. Um, but there is there's a template that comes from the Ontario Heritage uh, Nancy. OHT. Um, it, it's actually it's it's from the uh, the min. Oh, sorry, it's from the ministry. Oh, you I've lost sound. No, you're there. Okay, uh, it, we can't hear Marlene. Yeah, Clerk Martel is on mute, possibly. We can't hear Marlene. Yeah, we can't hear you. <laughs> Okay. Right. Um, yes. So it sounds like in this in this case, we're we're essentially talking about uh, staff, possibly with some support from working group members uh, within the sort of realm of you know confidentiality, etc. Um, so the yes, the the motion stands. Uh, and uh, does anyone have any final questions or discussion on this particular item? 
I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor of the motion as amended. All against. All abstaining. Motion carries. Uh, moving to 6.5 for mandatory designation of properties. There are two statements here. It seems like they go together. Uh, I'm happy to entertain either or both of them together or separately. Uh, may I have a motion in this regard? Thank you, Nancy. I, I would like to move that both of those clauses be in and all uh, and, and because I suggested both of them. <laughs> and I'll explain why, but the motion as it is, is, is a two-part motion, both to do with the same issue. Great. But they, maybe they should be separate because one is approaching about designation. The second motion is if the guy says no, then the inventory would be where his property would end up. Right. Uh, do I have a second? Yes. Do I have a second for the omnibus approach, Mayor Dubik? Uh, so we'll move them together, uh, Nancy. It, it's fine. Unless anyone really wants to divide them, that's fine. Um, so any discussion on this, uh, so that Heritage Gray Highlands assign Heritage Gray Highlands Working Group to approach currently listed heritage property owners to inform them of the changes to the Heritage Act in an effort to receive permission to designate uh, subject properties uh, and further be resolved that Heritage Gray Highlands recommend that council establish a heritage inventory for currently listed heritage properties where the property owners do not wish to move forward with designation. Can I speak to that? <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of you, you know, it, it, it's a Heritage Act thing there is not a heritage advocate in the entire province, whether they're professional or you know, heritage committee members like us that actually like this um, amendment to bill. It's part of bill 23, it was hidden in the dirt. And the only people that would ever benefit from this clause in the act um, are developers because what the listed category does that the owner of the property does not have any restrictions on anything he can do to the property unless he wants a demolition permit. And normally a demolition permit, you phone up the building department, you get it within 10 days and the bulldozer's there on day 11. If it's a listed heritage property and the guy asks for a demolition permit, there's a 60 day window and that has to go back to council and to the heritage committee, which then has the option of moving forward to um, <clears throat> designate the property so that it, it couldn't be demolished because it's designated. And so why I say it's in favor of developers, this is coming out of the GTA where they wanna tear down mansions on big lots and build six story condos. And it has absolutely no effect whatsoever up here. None of the properties on the thing are in danger of being designated. And I just, I know that there's going to be a big wall of protest that that form that we're adding to the end will talk, speaks to that. It gives us a chance to object to it as a municipality. And I know that the CHO, I've got a CHO board meeting on Sunday and I may be able to share an official statement from them, which is representing all of the municipal heritage committees in the province. Um, so, uh, but but that that's the issue, and how, but but the reason we need the working group to do it is we won't be the ones approaching it as Marlene explained. But this is to 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 Jen's question. This is where the working group will get together. We'll plan. We'll find the information that we think should be used in the approach. We'll talk about what's the best way of doing it. We'll add in the, the property tax incentive if you do um, say yes and so forth. Um, so, but, but we'll sort of work out and, and what materials should be given to the people so that if they do want to designate, they understand or they can approach the working group for more information. Um, and then in part two, if they say no, no chance, the reason the, the in, in idea of an inventory, there would be no restrictions on the property if it's on the inventory, including for demolition. <clears throat> what the inventory, and we had an inventory years ago, it was just never made public. And every property that's currently on the inventory was put there with the approval of the council. The purpose of the inventory is 
and, and making it public, it would make, um, it would it would take buildings that are recognizable heritage buildings. They might not be designated, they might not be listed, but we would like the community to know what they are and that they are important. And, it, you know, it, it it's just, it's a really good way for heritage education. I mean, a couple of buildings that I would automatically want to throw on will be example that I put in the, the work I sent. Um, the uh, the Sproul Mansion, um, Narsborough Hall, you know, I mean, and I mean, and once they're on the inventory, then as a working group or as a committee, we kind of have more of an opportunity. We've already done a little bit of research to recognize that they do have um, acceptable heritage attributes. Then we can start approaching those members to saying, so what do you think about designating this property and getting your tax incentive? So that's, this. But, but the way it is, it was recommended by CHO, by the head of CHO as a friend of mine that, Creating the inventory is a way to kind of drop those, don't, you don't drop those properties totally. And anything that's on the inventory can directly be designated without going through the list process. Okay, thanks Nancy. Uh, any further questions about uh, the motion? Good, I'll call the question. All in favor of adopting motion 6.5 as presented. All against, all abstaining, motion carries. As to item 6.6, 6, uh, we're talking about Community Heritage Ontario Conference for June 15th to 17th. And there is a proposed motion to send uh, one or more members to attend. Uh, motions in this regard. Could I suggest that because the motion hasn't been clarified that we should maybe take, before we make a motion, find out if any, I really want to go to the, the conference. I have to go, whether I get supported in payment or not, because I'm on the CHO board. I'm actually running one of the uh, the sessions in the on the Friday afternoon. Um, but it, is there anybody else on the committee that feels it would be valuable to go? Norm, and I'll tell you what, a bit of the history. Sometimes over the years, um, I've been the only one that goes. Sometimes there'll be a session, like there'll be two sessions that we want to, to cover both of them, or it'll be something that we're working on or something of interest. And so um, uh, the councillor, and I, I would really encourage Member Dubik if you can find it in your municipal budget and what you're allowed to do um, to consider attending. Um, but you, this year, a lot of it is about the changes to the Heritage Act. And I guess what I would say is if you go and sit through a session on the changes to an act that you maybe don't know very much about to start with, you know, did anybody lo even look at the um, agenda and see if there were uh, sessions that you, were of interest to you? Uh, is anyone else interested in going to this other than Member Matthews? Yeah. Oh. Nadia? Um, so I would consider uh, going. I, I would still have to just check my calendar, uh, but it's, it's definitely something I will look into. Um, and maybe in terms of the motion, you know, we can say, you know, if, if, if there's a few people still deciding, maybe it could read, you know, approve that members, you know, up to, you know, two or three, you know, would go. So just sort of adding that um, sort of concept. Sure. Yep. Member Halliday. Yes. Uh... I suggest that uh, you as our vice chair uh, get engrossed in, in, in the information that's being provided to these things. If you have the time, I would support you attending uh, through this committee. Uh, thank you, Member Halliday. I would also have to look close, more closely at my calendar. Well, okay, so then maybe we can say up to three and then see if the funding works. I mean, that's Nancy's uh, whoa, whoa on that, so I'll back off. That the funding for Nadia does not come out of the heritage budget. No, I, I knew Funding that. for yeah. Nadia comes out of the municipal budget and the budget does provide for two people. And I, I, I think it was a great idea because Emmett's going to take a fairly pivotal role in chairing these meetings. Right. I think it would be fabulous if he did get better acquainted with what's going on. Thanks both. Jen? Yes, when we talk about, about the municipal budget, is that the budget that is noted at the end of the motion? 
that's the one that we have some okay this is separately we have budgeted for okay. people no the little the little budget in there is the heritage budget okay so and there is money in that budget there's two thousand dollars for conferences so if Emmett and I go and if we travel together want a convertible ride Emmett <laughs> we the, the the mileage it would be you know cut in half kind of uh, in terms of the amount but we could still I know we can I know we can always get two people there and back under the um two thousand dollar allotment but two is kind of if we wanted to send more than two and as I said we don't count member um and Nadia um if we want to send more than two then we would have to go to council and ask them to find more money in the reserve to authorize that. But we can authorize two people today and that could say, uh, and, and if, if the motion just says two members and if it turns out to be only one because uh, Emma can't get away, that doesn't matter. We've approved sending two if that works out for him. Good, Jen again. Yeah, just to follow up on that. Um, I think there was some consternation as to whether the $2,000 was for us and the museum, the museum board. No, no consternation regarding that. No, that um, no that it says it's the museum board because the museum. When I, I checked this out myself, I was concerned. It's totally dedicated to HGH, but Just it was that. dedicated okay. to HGH as the subcommittee of the and museum and heritage board, which no longer exists because we're now back to being two separate official committees. So okay. that amount there, that thirty-two hundred dollars, is our annual amount, and there is there is a reserve back there for things, and that'll come up later when we talk about those signs, and that's coming up soon. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. That uh, that helps. I have one final question that just came when you said you were a speaker. As a speaker, are they comping your pass? Because that would make this much easier to send two people. Sorry, you you said you're speaking. At the conference, did I get that right? Yeah, but I don't get. I'm not speaking. I no. Oh, okay, you're attending. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not getting paid for. And if somebody is a presenter, then the one day they present, they can get paid for. I or as a member of CHO board, one of my chores was um, I volunteered to organize kind of a cool session because it's it's called a Grand River runs through it, and it's a session with the session with the three presenters along the Grand River and the source is right in my backyard practically at Wareham. Um, and and it so it's about the c communities that have a downtown heritage core with a river going through it. And there's uh, you know there's issues and there's interesting things to learn about that. So but no I don't get paid for that at all. What what well, was that in I didn't mean to inquire like that to me, that would yeah. be your personal business. Thank you for disclosing. It was more is your is your is your pass comped as a result. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm supportive. I just wanted to clarify. Thanks, my path, my path comp. I don't understand. Pass like uh, as, is your registration complimentary as a result of your uh, directorship? Yes. Yeah. No. Uh, great. So I will now entertain motions uh, in this regard. Whether we select a number or specific names is up to you, Clerk Martel. So I just wanted to point out that if. Um, um, Chair Nan Member Matthews, I'm used to reading the Member Matthews fine, thing. <laughs> Sorry, um, Member Matthews mentioned about carpooling. So the uh, heritage budget does ha actually have three hundred dollars for mileage, in addition to the two thousand dollars for their um, conference packages. So if you have the early bird conference of two hundred and seventy-five dollars plus accommodations at one hundred and fifty-five dollars, that would be. $430 per person. If the mileage is 252 and all the members travel together, that could be accommodated within the $300 mileage um, budget, um, which means that it would be less than $500 a person for the conference budget itself. And then there could be more um, opportunity for more members to attend beyond the two um, that was listed here. With, with apologies, you left out the hotel. We have to have two nights in a hotel. So early bird is 275 and then accommodations of 155. Um, so per, per night, so it's two nights. So if they're gone for the two nights, that would be about 585, but that still leaves you room for three people to go as opposed to just the two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For the 2000, you'd have three. If everybody travels together and you carpool for mileage. 
the only thing is um, I actually want to, I, I need money out of that carpool budget for a workshop over in Penetang. That's further down the, men, the uh, agenda. Right. So all that aside, um, let's have a motion. <laughs> Well, I guess now the question, now that she has clarified that, maybe the question is, does anybody besides Emma willing to consider going? Um, what we used to do in the past is next year, somebody else that isn't Emma, who's developed a real interest over the year and 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 wants to you know be involved in that would maybe go next year or the year after. It's always been varied around, except for me. <laughs> All right. It uh, seems like not so much. Uh, Nancy, do you want to make a motion? Um, I would like to make a motion that, uh, okay, um, Heritage Committee approved that member Matthews and possibly member Ferguson be approved to attend the blah, 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 you know, the 2023 Ontario Conference and that it be funded through the Museum and Heritage Committee budget. Thank you. Do I have a second? Uh, I'll take member Harrop. And any further final discussion on this before we decide? Emmett, I'll call you later after the meeting and we'll talk about the conference, okay? <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks. Um, all in favor of the motion. Thank you. <laughs> all against. All abstaining. Motion carries. Uh, moving to 6.7 as to designation of plaques. There is a proposed motion regarding the working group to research pricing, et cetera. Uh, may I have a motion? Jen? As presented, and I think I saw Nancy's hand as well. Uh, so the motion is that the Heritage Gray Highlands Committee authorize the members of the working group to research pricing for designation plaques to be brought forward at a future meeting for consideration. Uh, any discussion about this? I just, I, I have a little bit of good news. Um, the people, at, 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 as the thing said, the, the, they're out of business, the people that made the old plaques. And I, I asked for a quote from somebody I met at the conference. They wanted eight, $795 a plaque. And I went, I know that's not in my budget. Plus it, it wasn't that it was like a bronze engraving and stuff. So I called Dunwoody Signs that does a lot of signage for the municipality and he's done heritage signage for us before the, like the sign that's at the uh, old Durham Road. Um, and he can do it all park. And I just want to, you know, I'm going to work with, with Brent and work with him all the time, but he can create a really good facsimile, almost identical to the ones we have for about he figures around $350. Now the old ones were $250 each, but that was 2014. So, you know, we can expect that things have gone up. Um, so anyway, I will sort of work with him and the working group. And um, once we've got it, I'm, I'm hoping we can bring that to the July meeting um, and we can explore with staff how much budget we have. It is an issue though, at, at, if we order five, he'll give us a good discount. We usually order five at a time, and we may, we're, we may be inundated with designations with all this stuff that's going on right now. So we sh we need to order five. I think I've only got one or two left, and there's a buildings for both of them. Um, in that in that case, we would probably have to request from the municipality that they go back to the reserve um, for signage money that we haven't spent in some years. It's it's sort of always been like we'll, we'll spend. $1,200 in one year and not spend any signage money for three years and it all works out in the, in the, in the wash. Great. Uh, any further information or questions, discussion on this item? I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor of the motion as presented. All against. All abstaining. Motion carries. Uh, 6.8 as to the upcoming heritage workshop. I think this is the item that uh, Nancy had just brought up in terms of hoping for an expense on mileage to go to Penetang machine next Monday, which is coming up. Uh, motions in this regard. Thank you, Nancy. I'm assuming as, as it is framed here and I saw Nadia as well. 
Uh, any questions, comments, discussion on this? Um, I'm proposing this for anybody that has the time. If you want to be, especially if you want to be in the working group and understand more about how the Ontario, how the designation process works, what the Ontario Heritage Act is, what it entails, um, this would be a very good way to spend, well, you know, by the time we commute back and forth and everything, it's pretty much a need because it's an hour and a half over to Panatang. I think the workshop would be a couple of hours, so it would be, you know, it would be an all night, uh, you know, like the whole evening would be taken up. Um, I want to go because I'm still struggling to figure out all these changes to the OHA, but I just wanted it open to anybody else that, that really wants to learn more about the Heritage Act. And what I will probably propose for later this year, I'm going to do some educational sessions with the working group on research tools and the act. So we all, they, you know, know more about it. Um, but uh, in the meantime, this is just a, a really good introduction to it um, as a start. So. Great. Uh, any further discussion, questions, interest in going with Nancy or something? Anyone? All right, I'll call yes, the question. <laughs> Nadia? Yes, I just wanted to say that, you know, it's not not out of interest, uh, just more about timing um, and availability. But um, but thank you, Nancy, for uh, for going and bringing back that information. And I think, you know, educational sessions, you know, with the rest of the committee would be uh, very beneficial. What I will probably do, and I don't know that we're going to, we'll see how this year's budget, come fall, depending on how the budget goes with everything else that's going on, there was a plan to have a workshop here in Grey Highlands that the municipality was going to support, and we were going to invite people from the other communities, like South Grey and West Grey and Southgate and West Grey and so forth. There was a lot of interest in it, but that was going to have at the beginning of the pandemic. So I'm thinking once we sort of get everything up and running today, the working group can kind of look at the idea of resurrecting that idea, which was approved a long time ago and get something going for later this year. And, and that's probably the best way for the local people to find out is to have them run a workshop. I just did run across um, some information on a video that we'll, the working group will probably watch that's put up by the ministry. So there's all kinds of stuff out there. I just want to go for me to be at the top of my game right now with all the things that are happening. Thanks, Nancy. Um, I guess as the motion was put on the table, I'm realizing that we didn't actually specify who we were talking about. Uh, I think it's safe to say, Nancy and Nadia, given that you were putting the motion forward, that we are saying in this case, it's member Matthews who will attend the workshop. Is that right? Great. Uh, other than that, I think it's safe to call the question. Uh, all in favor of the motion as presented with member Matthews attending. <laughs> all against, all abstaining. <clears throat> motion carries. Moving on, we've got a consent agenda. There are numerous items and documents being presented here. Uh, so I will entertain motions to approve those items with the exception of any items that anyone deems should be extracted for independent consideration. Does everyone understand what I mean by that? Um, Nancy? I need to extract 7.4 for discussion, but I was told we could, what we do is we approve all of them because the information is in the package. And then if you want to just read the numbers and or, or people can put up, you know, you just go down any comments on 7.1, any comments on 7.2, blah, blah, blah. When we get to, I think it's 7.4, um, the, then I, I'll jump in and explain why there's a little bit of, uh, not, not a problem, something we need to address with that. Um, okay. And So that, that that's fine. Um, I'll, I'll take that as a, as a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Uh, and wait I'll- a minute, Wait a minute, that's where, um, what we don't have, we, there's a 7.10. The consent but, agenda as amended needs to be in the motion because we've added 
after 7.9, the information from the ministry about the ERO on, on the planning. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll take that as a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. To as amended to include item 7.10, I think that. 7.10, yeah. And does anyone want to second, <laughs> second that? Thank you, Nadia. Uh, any, any discussion on the motion before we just start going through our list here? <laughs> all right, all in favor? All against? All abstaining? Motion carries. Uh, so starting with 7.2, as the Greyhounds 2023 budget, we've received the 2023 Heritage Greyhounds budget for information. Any other information anyone needs to bring up about this item before we move on? Good. Uh, local heritage buildings is a brief overview provided in the form of HGHC April 25, 2023, regarding the heritage architecture of Great Highlands. Anything further anyone needs to bring up about this item at this time? Nancy? I just want to bring up something just so that for everybody to know. It's not just that, but all of those PowerPoint presentations are things that I have developed over the years. I mean, they've been presented at the home show, they've been presented to council. It's just for your information. If there's, when you start going through them, if, if any of you have concerns or questions or you think they should include something that may be left out, you know, I'm only one person, feel free always to let me know that, that you know, they can be improved on and, and I'm happy to do that. I, I spend my life doing PowerPoints. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, moving on, I was just down in the document here. Uh, Holiday. Seven point, oh, Stuart? Yes, yeah, so I, I, I did, couldn't uh, pass through that section without commending uh, Nancy for all the hard work that she's done. It's, it's beautiful. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's really, it's, it's an asset in itself. Uh, and she's done a tremendous job and she's been doing it as she says, as a solo driver uh, over the years. And uh, I, let's say that uh, I think that Nancy has saved the Heritage Act in, uh, in Grey Highlands. So uh, again, just my kudos to her. Thanks Stuart. Thank uh, you everybody. That goes, I'm sure. Uh, moving on to 7.4, August 10, 2022 MHAC recommendation. Uh, any any discussion here? That that's the one that I'm, I'm going to I'm going to ask for some. I think I have to ask for a, a recommendation from the committee once you understand. The that deals with putting up a red flag to um, notify HGH if there is a request for um, a, um, an a permit, a building permit to either alter or to change a heritage property or to put an addition on it or, oh, sorry, my son, son uh, or to um, destroy a part of it. Um, the red flag is to uh, um, advise the heritage committee. So that as chair, that would come to me. Now, the Heritage Act, what wasn't sort of made clear, and I'm going to send this, I'll send this, and I'll maybe actually send it to uh, Coordinator Thompson to add to the minutes for information. I've got a really short thing, and it's very, very clear that council can't approve, council needs to approve those permits. That they're not automatic, and it's under the Heritage Act, Heritage Gray Highlands, the committee should be consulted for um, advice and adv in an advisory capacity. Is it appropriate? Is it not? I'm going to do a really quick, say the guy, Hickling House is designated. Say the guy applies to have a garage. Well, you know, a separate garage, maybe with a, a walkway. It's not that he can't do that. It's that they need to come to HGH. We would probably talk to Randy. I talk to Randy all the time. He's one of my, my best owners in terms of keeping in touch with the Heritage Committee. But it, it wouldn't be that he couldn't build it. It would be that 
we would maybe recommend by all means build it. If you don't want to build it out of matching brick, maybe build it out of board and batten, something that's going to be complementary. We don't want to see purple tin because that's going to totally destroy the whole atmosphere of that beautiful heritage mansion um, in Flesherton. So that, that's kind of the issue. So what I would like the committee to maybe recommend is that um, staff, we work with staff, and as Raylene says, we talk all the time, we develop a, a very, um, an efficient means of dealing with those permit issues when they arise, because we don't, on the other hand, want the poor guy to have to wait three months for the next heritage meeting. And it, it, and I don't know, Rene, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know that a public heritage meeting is where we should be using somebody's name as a property owner just because he wants a permit to build a garage. Um, that's correct. So the intention would be um, through you, Chair Ferguson, if that's okay. Um, the intention would be that there is a separate application form that uh, people with heritage properties actually fill out um, for a request to amend the heritage property. Um, this is just in case, this will be a flag in the, there's one for the building department, one for the finance department. It would flag them if a property only owner of a designated property submitted a building permit application without doing the heritage one. So if it did, then the building department would automatically notify me. I would automatically notify Nancy as the um, HGH working group chair and send her the information. The working group would go through it, provide their recommendations. Then MHAC itself would call a special meeting as soon as the working group has that information together. Um, and then um, Heritage Grey Highlands would look at it. They don't have to have the owner's name because who owns a property is not relevant to what what in, what okay. needs to happen to maintain the integrity of the heritage attributes of the property. Um, and then Heritage Grey Highlands as the committee would provide a recommendation to council and then council would do would do what they needed to do and make their recommendation related to the building permit um, process and what can be permitted for that as well. So there's already inherently a process in place for it, um, for just, how those get I didn't understand handled. that from, from the end. And that's great. I'm really glad to hear that. I was kind of hoping that in, if it's a one, if it's a one issue, meeting does it need to be a public meeting or can can an email be sent to everybody on the committee no no unfortunately oh. that would be determined to be a closed meeting of okay. a committee under the municipal act so this body right here cannot yeah. meet outside of a public meeting you're not allowed it is not permitted under the municipal act um, okay. but the working group can meet and go through all of that kind of stuff um but yeah this committee can meet I, I mean you need 48 hours notice for that to have that information out so when the working group say gets within 48 hours of being ready to present then they can they can schedule okay, that meeting and, and, and call the meeting together and as long as you have just a quorum of members then you can hold that meeting and it could be just a really quick one issue meeting that takes 15 minutes that's correct thank you okay that that's that resolves that problem <laughs> thanks nancy thanks for martel jen yeah i'm an, i'm i'm just going to clarify my understanding uh my understanding is that we're just recommending a fail safe for a pro for a process that's already in place quite so all right i'm supportive <laughs> it's already part of the consent agenda it sounded like nancy maybe you wanted some addition or change to the process as framed here. Uh, do you still have anything you want to, to put before the no, committee? No, no, now that it's been clarified by Clerk Martel, I understand that there is a process in place. I just didn't know that, and it didn't look like it from what I was reading. Great. We've no never had to use it, Nancy. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, but you know, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering in a couple of cases where it should have been used. <laughs> Stuart? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't want to bring up the examples where it should have been used. All I can say is that the, when we designate a, uh, a heritage, we designate the property as well as the building. So uh, if we have a heritage property uh, that's designated and somebody wants to, you know, uh, let's say put in a shed or something, technically, uh, if it comes under the building code, that should be should be looked at as part of the heritage. So I just wanted to, uh, to clarify that we're when we're designating, we're designating the property as well as the building. Thank you. 
Thanks all. Uh, moving on to 7.5 as um, to the page. Chair yeah. Ferguson. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. If, if I may. Um, uh, that's correct. We never had a trigger for the building department to recognize that it was the um, was a designated property for building permits before. So now there's that trigger in place. So hopefully this process that I just mentioned to Nancy that is in place will be triggered for us before. Before the only trigger we had was if the owner actually filled out the heritage uh -huh. alteration permit. Okay. But now we have the trigger for any building permit. If it's related uh -huh. to that property, it gets triggered to go through the process. And, and, and the thing is the owner's don't necessarily know that that's what they're supposed to do. And, and the issue, there is an issue that can be mentioned because everybody's seen it. The heritage mural on the side of the fire hall now has a door in the middle of it. And that permit was granted without us being consulted. I found out about it. The owner was awesome. And he, uh, he gave us time. It's now been documented uh, very carefully by the library videographer and it will eventually be made into a reproduced mural that can be put elsewhere in the municipality. Thank you. Uh, moving on then to 7.5, um, receiving the report CTE 2304 uh, regarding Camplin designation. Any comments on this? Good. Uh, and then heritage designation process overview. We've got that summary care of mostly Nancy, I believe. <laughs> um, further 7.7 .7, impact to bill 23 on heritage buildings and discussion on heritage tax incentive, uh, receiving that. Uh, any, any comments, questions? For 7.7. Good. Uh, we've also been, oh, Stuart? Yeah. The, I'll, I'll back the, off on that and come up later with yeah. uh, my question. Yeah. The, um, the designation of heritage property MGH, that was that was again used at the home show and stuff, but that is a really wonderful tool to share with property owners so that they understand in brief everything that's involved, the advantages, the disadvantages. So I'm, I'm thinking that I'll, I'll look at it, I'll maybe even tighten it up a bit specifically for this issue of the designations, but that's one of the tools I really think we should be using. Great. My, my comment uh, re really relates to the potential for heritage grants. Uh, Munshaw House uh, looks uh, like, uh, you know, if you go back to what it looked like historically, but back in, I think in the early nineties, it received a million dollar heritage grant, which allowed the owner at the time to rebuild the Munshaw House, put on a new porch, et cetera, and, and renovate uh, that, that facility. And a million dollars back in the nineties uh, was, was a lot of money. And then eventually, Unfortunately, uh, it it uh, it went bankrupt uh, as as an operation, but a heritage grant uh, saved that building. So keep on the lookout. That's all I'm saying is if they get heritage grants, because that was uh, that was a building that was saved by a heritage grant. Um, to address the heritage grants, um, they don't exist right now. Not not in the Ford budget. No way. What what does exist um, that we can um, we, we, we can think about the Trillium Foundation. If there was a heritage building that we wanted to repurpose and refit to serve a public benefit, um, there, there, there oh. could possibly be things like that. And one example that came to mind in one of the conferences I was at, they repurposed a, an abandoned, not abandoned, but a church that had been de-sanctified and, and it was about um, an hour's drive out of Ottawa and anybody in that area that needed dialysis was driving into the hospital in the middle of Ottawa taking the whole day finding downtown parking they repurposed that church and each sort of window became a bay where somebody could sit in this beautiful environment and get their dialysis and not have to go into Ottawa and there was all kinds of funding for them to do that, so they preserved a heritage structure and 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 performed a public um, public um, you know uh, 
uh, service. So that's something we, depending on what comes up, you know. I'll, I'll speak to you on the working group side of, I have an idea, so. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, excellent. Uh, moving on a couple of final items on the consent agenda. We've got the Community Heritage Ontario news quarterly newsletter in care of Nancy Matthews for both fall and winter. And anything you want to bring up here, Nancy? Seems pretty. It's actually my job to intake those articles and work with the editor. Anybody who has an idea for an article, by all means, write it and I'll send it in. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, and then we've got 7.9 general information, uh, receiving the general information for HGHC members, again, for information. Great. Uh, anything Anything final on the consent agenda? Oh, we had 7.10. Uh, Nancy, you're on mute. Uh, that is, uh, it's just a quick, and I know that the municipality, I have an answer from Marilyn, they are making a comment, but in there, there is a place to comment, and the more comments, the better. The CHO is going to be push, push, pushing for this. It doesn't go to the, the 3rd of June. When I get, have been to the CHO meeting on Sunday and have an idea. There's a municipal planner from Markham on the board, and he is going to share his thoughts, and I'll pass them around. And if every single person wants to zap in for two minutes and send that comment in to get rid of that one section about unlisting things, that would make our work, our committee work, an awful lot easier. <laughs> uh, thanks, Nancy. And I think that uh, that information you're describing shows up in the email thread from earlier this week, right? Great, so that's uh, up to you all in your own various uh, ways to, to participate as you see fit. Uh, I'll move to item eight, which is our next meeting. Uh, we have decided that at least it will, our next meeting will happen July 18th, uh, 2023 at 2 p.m. But if we want to set a different time, now is the time to do so. I'll entertain any motions that people have in this regard. Is he? Uh, I'm content to leave it at, at the standard thing because we all know if we need to call something sooner, we can. I'm away in June at the conference, and by July, I would have a conference report and things to share. So that's I, that's fine with me, barring any craziness that comes up that we have to have a special meeting for. Sounds good. Unless anyone tells me otherwise, we'll just assume that we'll meet in mid July. Next item on the agenda is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, one, one more question. Is there anybody <laughs> else? No, no, now that you've sat through all of this and you know what the working group's gonna be doing, other than am, but is there anybody else who wants to participate in the working group or even just be, okay, Nadia, super? So yeah, so I'll be available like as much as I can, um, but uh, please, <laughs> yeah, keep me in the loop and I'll, I'll assist where I can. Well, what I'll do is I'll send an email out to everybody that's interested. Yeah. And, I'm uh, interested. And, and, you know, hmm? so, so, hey, Stuart, you said yes? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Stuart's always been on the working group, but I was on the committee too. Okay. Good. And uh, I guess it goes without saying, if, if anyone sh should like to join the working group uh, for any reason, by all means, uh, maybe. Email. Just email. I, oh, the other thing, do you want to know uh, right now who's on the working group? Um, that isn't at the meeting. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll tell you a little bit. Yeah, I'll tell you about that. And these are people that have been on it for a long time. Um, there's Ben Patey, uh, and I think you know his his uh, daughter-in-law Michelle is the chair of the, the Chamber of Commerce or whatever. They're big in and around the community. Ben's a retired contractor, and he he's been invaluable to me. When a building has structural issues or something needs to be fixed he's great and he installs the heritage plaques you know he goes around with a screwdriver in his back pocket so he that's sort of hit, been his role and he actually went to a conference because it all, was all structural oh sorry is there something wrong Barney? i shouldn't share these names uh raylene um but nancy i just want to caution you you can share the names for sure um but i would be hesitant in speaking on their personal information like their education their background their history oh, okay. without them providing that information themselves oh okay all right. Um, so the other two names are Mary Harrison from Priceville and um, Jess Vernier, who owns a heritage building in the municipality. She works for a heritage, a very highly um, respected heritage architect in Toronto. 
So she's really good on refits and retrofits and stuff. It does it. Uh, alrighty. Well, uh, that seems like all of our business for the day. I'll entertain motions to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you, Nadia and Nancy. Uh, all in favor. And let's hope, let's hope the next one's about a quarter of this time. <laughs> all abstaining. Motion carries. Thanks very much, everyone.